Hello and welcome to the interview on manual muscle testing. This was put together with Dr. Rohde and myself uh, working together. This uh, lecture will in essence be the foundation uh, to give you some perspective on what manual muscle testing is, uh, when and why physical therapists will conduct a manual muscle test. Uh, looking at the course objectives here, we're going to this term learn all of the procedures for manual muscle testing of the upper and lower extremities. Uh, we will also do quite a bit of work on surface anatomy landmarks. Our learning objectives will be uh, during this presentation to discuss the differences between a manual muscle test and a strength screen. Uh, we will also talk a little bit about, and you will find in your textbook, information about reliability and validity of manual muscle testing. Uh, we will also uh, talk about, uh, as I said, uh, when and how to use a manual muscle test, and then also uh, there are very specific standardized procedures, which of course relate to reliability and validity that we will discuss, and of course the different muscle grades and how to assign those. This information relates to your Kendall McCreary textbook. Uh, and we'll begin by talking about muscle strength. Uh, basically, when a muscle contracts, force is generated. And isotonic uh, muscle strength would refer to the use of free weights or resistance machines. Uh, typical stuff we would do when we are working out at the gym. Uh, isokinetic is not used as much anymore, but it's basically uh, having a subject provide resistance through a range of motion at a specific velocity. So you're strapped to a machine and for example you're doing knee extension and the machine will only let you move so quickly and so you generate as much resistance in you, as you can against at that speed throughout the range of motion uh, and then it gives you a curve where uh, part of that curve you will generate the most amount of uh, force. We'll talk about that on the next slide. And then of course isometric uh, contractions refer to uh, no joint movement but the muscles uh, are contracting. So something you are likely already aware of is the force length, force -length relationship. Uh, this graph basically shows if you think about your uh, physiology of muscles, uh, cross bridges, sarcomeres, uh, basically as when they are aligned optimally you generate the most amount of strength and so for every muscle there is an optimal length of those muscle fibers when the most force will be generated depicted here by the top of this curve. So if you're picturing elbow flexion and you start in anatomical position with your elbow fully extended and then as you contract the biceps brachii and bring flex the elbow bringing the palm of the hand towards the shoulder at about the midway point 90 degrees of elbow flexion that will be where the maximal force is generated and so this has many implications which we will discuss uh, when you are conducting a manual muscle test, uh, or we should say when you're testing strength of a subject, you will look take into consideration many factors. Their strength, their activity level, their age, where is this test being conducted? Is it in an outpatient clinic? Is it on a sports field? What equipment do you have available? And so forth. And so when you have more than one option available, of course you want to be choosing the option that is the most objective and provides quantifiable data. So often when we are testing strength of a patient or an athlete, we are planning to compare the findings today to additional findings in the future to be able to demonstrate progress, uh, improve strength and improve muscle function. Therefore, uh, standardization is critical. Uh, one idea of strength testing and manual muscle testing is that any physical therapist conducting a manual muscle test will use the same procedures so therefore if I conduct a manual muscle test on a patient and then tomorrow another clinician uh, 
uh, comes in and does the same test, we should be getting the same results, assuming everything else is equal. So two key elements of standardization are patient positioning, and we will discuss throughout the term. Uh, every muscle, manual muscle test has a specific optimal patient position, and then also examiner technique is critical, uh, that we apply manual resistance the same way uh, every time, again, so that we can compare findings uh, among various therapists and among the same therapist over time. So we'll talk a little bit about muscle length. Uh, when the patient is uh, shortening or lengthening a muscle and moving a joint, uh, at times the muscle length can have an impact on the amount of force that's being produced and therefore our strength testing findings. Also there are uh, several joints who have, or several muscles who cross more than one joint and there are considerations for that as well. So there are two kinds of insufficiency, active and passive. For active insufficiency, it's in essence that the when a muscle gets too shortened, this is basically that um, length force relationship curve that we looked at previously. When a muscle is too short, it will not be able to generate uh, as much force as when it's in its optimal, uh, usually mid-range uh, position and therefore optimal length. Also, uh, when a, so in, in this example here, the hamstring muscle crosses both the hip joint and the knee joint. And so by having the knee uh, flexed with the hip extended, the hamstring muscle is very shortened and therefore not able to produce as much force. So this uh, indicates a lot of words to describe what we saw uh, um, in the previous picture. And so I'll uh, allow it so for some people, the picture teaches the concept very well. For others, these words teach the concept very well. Um, in essence, this whole idea of a muscle being on slack, being too short, uh, kind of describes that. When we get to passive insufficiency, this is basically uh, basically stating that, again, a muscle like the hamstring that crosses both the hip and the knee joint, uh, at some point, for example, knee extension will be limited if we have the hip in full flexion. When we have the hip in full flexion, that is already lengthening the hamstrings. And then as we extend or straighten the knee, it further lengthens those muscles. And so uh, basically, in essence, the take home message is when we are dealing with a muscle that crosses more than one joint, we need to be aware of that and make sure that uh, we take all of those joints that the muscle is crossing into consideration. We will discuss this at length in, in uh, lab. Okay, so then we go to testing muscle strength. Obviously, physical therapists are going to be concerned with strength testing uh, of patients, and this will take place in many different treatment settings. Uh, physical therapists uh, treat patients in the outpatient orthopedic setting, as well as the acute care hospital setting, a skilled nursing facility, uh, a neurological rehab center, and others. And so there are different types types of muscle strength testing that occurs in those different places. So these are two examples of uh, this, this picture and this picture uh, are examples of a screen versus a test. So this first picture here depicts a manual muscle test. Uh, what is being tested here is right hip adduction. And so the therapist has moved the left leg out of out of the way, holding it with the therapist's left arm, and then with his right hand, he is applying pressure to the right uh, hip, uh, the right femur, uh, moving into hip adduction. So it's a very specific, very focused on trying to isolate those specific muscles. This, on the other hand, would depict a muscle screen where multiple muscles and bilaterally are being tested. So often a screen will be utilized first and if there is a deficit noted, then perhaps the clinician will focus in on a very specific manual muscle test. Um, there is also something called a RIM, which you will learn about in your musculoskeletal courses, a resisted isometric. And in many ways, the previous picture uh, 
would be the beginning of testing, for example, shoulder flexion and in a very gross general air, uh, method, getting a general idea for uh, how much resistance the person is able to tolerate. And so the findings here, instead of assigning a specific strength grade to one muscle, we are saying uh, strong and pain-free. They're able to contract the muscle, generate force. There's no uh, pain or no issues. Uh, the next uh, possibility would be strong and painful. So they can generate force, but they're having pain with it. Uh, and then there may be uh, weakness. So they're not generating a whole lot of force and they have pain or weak and painless uh, so no force or very little force is generated and there's no pain that could indicate a complete tear so a resisted isometric would be an example of a screen a more global general uh, look at a patient's strength whereas a manual muscle test is much more specific so part of the standardized procedures that physical therapists use with manual muscle testing involves the instruction uh, the verbal instructions that we give to a patient. And one area that we want to uh, emphasize this first term is that you get into the habit of using the same terminology every time you conduct a manual muscle test. The words after you, uh, and you'll, we'll discuss the procedure here in a few slides, but once you have uh, the, the patient correctly positioned and you're ready to apply resistance, you will say to them, quote, I'm going to provide resistance, don't let me move you. And if you get in the habit of saying the same words every time, that standardizes uh, the procedure. Uh, we also want to make sure that we use layman's terms with our patients. This will be mentioned several times uh, throughout this term and in, in many courses. Uh, you're going to be learning a lot of technical jargon, a lot of anatomical terms, terms for kinesiology and so forth which we will discuss among ourselves. And when you communicate with other healthcare providers, including physicians, in your written documentation, you want to use those um, technical clinical term terms. However, when you're talking to your patients, we need to remember that they do not have the same background. And so instead of saying, I would like you to perform maximal elbow flexion, we're going to say we'd like you to uh, with all of your strength to bring your palm towards your shoulder. So same instructions, uh, technical jargon versus layman's jargon. Okay, so when we're doing a manual muscle test, we are uh, typically going to get to what we call a break test. That's where we're going to use the terminology, I'm going to provide resistance, don't let me move you. And we're going to uh, apply manual force to the distal end of the distal segment of the joint being tested. and so when we're in class, we will, uh, you'll be able to see this and we'll practice it in lab. But the basic idea is we're going to position ourselves uh, relative to the patient to provide resistance uh, and, be, and isolate a certain muscle or muscle groups and uh, then be able to assign a strength grade to them. So there are many considerations there. One of those are body mechanics, uh, the patient's position, our position, and so forth, which we will discuss. So one example here that we will do in class is uh, testing shoulder abduction and the location of our resistance and the differences in what the patient feels and what the clinician feels. So now we get to manual muscle testing and the grades are basically zero through five uh, with five being normal, four being good, three being fair, two is poor, one is trace, and zero is no palpable or observable muscle contraction. And so we'll come back to this uh, many times, but just so you see that there is uh, a table that kind of outlines how we arrive at these different muscle grades. And the basic sequence is we explain to the patient what we are doing and why, uh, and we position the patient so the muscle can move against gravity. So in that example of shoulder abduction, the patient is sitting or standing. Uh, we take the limb and uh, move the limb through that full motion to make sure that there is no uh, structural issue that's preventing the joint from moving through that full range of motion. We return the limb to the beginning position. We ask the patient then to do that. Now here's a key point, uh, bullet number five here. Uh, 
when